Greetings everyone, I'm Mr. Mokalover, of course, and thank you for rejoining me here in TNO. Last time we continue to slash budgets, 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 trying to lower our debt, as well as raise our GDP, and at the very end of last episode, we went to war with Cornwall, in which hopefully the Germans don't come striking at our door, because that would be very, very bad for us. But that's okay. You never know how far we can get. We're still building some factories, we want to build some infrastructure, and uh, yeah, let's invade Cornwall. Uh, so a couple comments included that I'm playing Thatcher pretty pretty normally, I suppose, by always taking austerity measures. Very, very strong austerity measures. Yeah, this is room's division not going to stand up to us. Hopefully we can get to this quickly before Germany does anything. Even their tanks can't stand up to us. What is the flag of Cornwall? Oh, Ooh, the effects of unification. Oh, look at that. Now that some time has passed since unification was finally realized, its effects have started to be felt by the peoples of Wales. Initially, not much change. The shop stayed open and they spoke the same language as before. Many even wondered what all the fuss had been to begin with. Um, this is exactly the same thing we wrote yesterday, so I'm not going to continue reading this. Uh, but Welsh terrorism becomes Welsh resistance. Nice. The Welsh shall be successfully subjugated. And Cornish people, we've lost nine guys versus 3,000. 3,800. Cherbourg, not a Cherbourg, Cherbourg. 72. Less than 100 losses, English Civil War. Oh. And the Iron Lady rises. A new threat to Britain. We'll read that as soon as we do some other. Oh. Stuff. Oh, the Welsh is over there. Approaching the Hun, visiting an old friend. We probably want to do that quickly. Also, there's another comment stating that going down a missed chance is going down the path that isn't quite complete yet. Uh, that's kind of disappointing, but we'll see what happens. You know, we'll go as far as we possibly can. Defensive efforts, old guard will get more influence, huh? Armed population, ooh. More division defense support territory. We'll lose some efficiency, but more loyalty. Spec ops, you get more efficiency. I like that. More recruitable population factor. Oh, don't tempt me with a good time. Loyalty will go up. Efficiency will go up. Efficiency will go up. And loyalty will moderately increase. Uh, loyalty. This is all about loyalty on the left side here. New Royal Marines. New Spec Ops. I'm not really using Spec Ops. So even though I said I wanted to go down this path yesterday. Uh, efficiency. Efficiency. My, that population. We kind of really need population. So we're going to go down armed police. Our army needs more men. Unfortunately, the Civil War drained us, us of them. We'll never be able to properly defend England from invaders unless we address the shortage, one which our boffins might just address. By incorporating the police as an integral part of our homeland defense, we can greatly increase the amount of reserves available to the army whilst ensuring better security within our borders. It is what it is, you know. We're going to lose a little bit of efficiency. Actually, we're going to lose a moderate amount, which is not ideal, but whatever. We would have 93% influence. That's fine. There's the factories, electoral season. Cool. The new threat to Britain besides ourselves. Honor party members, if I may for a moment speak to you, I'd like to turn your attention to a rather grave matter. And honestly, I'd not have not talked about it at all if I could get away with it, but it's simply too urgent, said Margaret Thatcher during a total formal dinner party. Uh, stepping up to the front of the room and graciously taking the megaphone, or microphone, from one of the hall's attendants. You know, I want to put these guys into a defensive position, so just because I'm not sure if Germany's going to invade, maybe, maybe not. Uh, you, can't in, you can't guard the sea like that. Do something like that. So, uh, let us continue. She smiled assuredly to the royal party, back decked in glamour and the glittering hotel dining room they had reserved for the dinner. They had gone rather well for themselves, she thought. The royal party was still at the top of English society as they had been before she took charge. Yet with their leadership, the society, society they said atop had grown to unimaginable heights. You see, we're in something of a crisis. For years, we've out politic out negotiated, and, and totality outdone the opposition. We've worked ourselves to the bone, bringing the station back from the brink, and even struggling against members of our own party to do so. Though, thankfully, those troublemakers are no longer with the party. The room was silent, the politicians waiting on bated breath for the Prime Minister to get to the point. She smirked, savoring the moment. And so what I'm saying is that we have a problem. With so many superb victories under our belts, we have no signs of them stopping anytime soon. I rather worry we're in danger of getting bored. Someone give Maggie a challenge for once. Oh. Ballman, please stay in Germany. Please stay in Germany, Ballman, please. Alright, I do want to save a little bit of fuel, even though our guys are probably use, our infantry uses a little bit of fuel as well. So go ahead, I'm not going to have you train, just, just kind of retire for now, and take a little siesta, even though we're English. We're taking a little bit of a siesta. Let's get some more fuel first, too. And I do have a cup of coffee, very hot coffee, to keep us nice, warm, and satiated. Hey, look, the deficit. Once we took over Cornwall, we got more of a deficit. Or, less of a deficit. Hmm. Cool. Very good. Alright, so 67. Industrially, we're doing not too bad. We're 
pretty much with everyone else. Uh, with engineering, we're pretty much with everyone else as well, which is awesome. Let's get some better anti-air. Cool. I wish we could get another research slot. Let's see. Tanks, of course. Anti-air, of course. Artillery. The normal stuff that we normally need. Uh, let's see. Motorizer, fine. Planes, of course. Whatever. Let's come over here. Oh, an unsteady crown. Already rumors are spreading throughout the late aisles of the fate of the late king, or just King Henry the Ninth. Only recently coronated, the king has already taken a hot topic of discussion, as so he may or may not have been crippled, crippled so shortly into his reign by deliberating stroke. The exact cause is unknown, but unscrupulous papers and even the less scrupulous public are ablaze with the talk of yet another king in such, so short a period of time. Is the regency required? Is he being held hostage? Was Henry leading a monarchist coup to restore England and invade Wales only to be stopped by the military who have now put him against a wall and shot him only to be stopped by the PM who is also inca incapacitated but who has escaped and will cause a second civil war? <laughs> oh, I like that last one. Of course, the truth is well known to those close to Henry. It is unlikely that the new king will last much longer, and any speculation about his health. Leaving aside the, the grabbing headlines, most people are simply devastated to have the threat of a chaotic change foisted upon them, especially since Henry seemed to be a more stable king than the last and was much more popular. My god, not again. Oh, this is a problem with monarchy, but it, you can have this in republics and democracies as well. Uh, oh, we're demobilizing. Oh my goodness. Uh, we have a poverty rate, civil, civil service opt-out, no racial integration, integration, uh, Welsh resistance, military austerity, oh my goodness. Point two, huh? Alright, so we need more el elite support, even though we're going to need more efficiency very soon. Oh, there we go. Did that change anything? Hold on. So, our base is currently 52.5. That is not ideal, man. Which is still positive. But that's a lot of loyalty. Hmm. What happens? Our current loyalty is 49.9%. What happens if I just try to max it out? I want to get urban centers. Let's try it. Okay, so our current loyalty is 100%. The base loyalty is 90%. Okay, it can't say it 100, so be it. Uh, oh, wait, we hit... Oh. Okay. Military loyalty will increase. I want more efficiency, I think. That'd be better. I thought we had to choose only one path down there here. That's okay. Uh, I don't want to lose political power. We'll gain one more, one percent more influence. Let's, uh, let's let's visit an old friend and see what happens. After the Second World War broke out, the U.S. abandoned England, abandoned us, and doomed us to our German-dominated fate. Since then, we have been constantly avoided reaching out to the Americans. We did not feel like we could truly trust them. Yet the Anglo-American relationship has not always been this cold. After all, we did fight side and side by side during World War One. By ushering in a new age of Anglo-American friendship and mutual assistance, we could be able to stand taller than we ever need on the world stage. Good. Actually, can we go down both ways? We still can. Probably. Maybe. Cool. Yeah, America, could you uh, could you help us out? Uh, we need a bailout. A ben it's Bennett, right? Yeah, Bennett. Somewhat military austerity. Well, hopefully the Germans don't attack us because we still have uh, problems to deal with. I know it's so much better to <clears throat> increase your GDP than pay off the debt, but I really want to start paying off more of the debt. I really do. Oh, buddy boy. Oh, no, 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 no. Hmm. I don't like how these motorized divisions are. I might. Instead, make APCs, because motorized, they're not, they're not looking that thick. I, I, I want something a little thicker. Thicker for my ticker. Because their armor is 55, motorized. That's pretty good armor mount, honestly. Motorized has, well, none. Oh, these are IFVs, of course, but let's see. These APCs have 40 armor. So even then, that's still pretty good. It requires quite a bit to produce them, but... Mm. I'll put you under here. That's fine. We're still going to keep making motorized, but... Only keep it on one for now. <clears throat> what are we building? Good. Some roads? Good. So, our man in Washington. We'll read that very soon. Oh, we have to choose who we want to represent us, huh? Oh, a black or blue telephone overlooking Washington. Uh, we could do that. Let's go back over here and kind of swap things out. Let's get this one. The FV-432. Producing tanks may seem like a good idea on the surface, yet the fact of the matter is that we merely do not have the resources nor the industrial capacity to spare much for lumbering tank hulks. Armored personal carriers, particularly the encouraging FV-43 design, are better and cheaper alternatives to the expensive and ineffective tanks that would otherwise we would otherwise produce. We must be honest with ourselves. Tanks may be a prestigious addition to our military, but it would be irresponsible to believe that we can manufacture enough to generally threaten the likes of the Germans. Well, we're still trying to make tanks, but APCs are where we want to go. So, Francis Pym had expected Thatcher to arrive at his office early, but he soon realized that she would arrive even earlier than usual. This time, the subject of the talk would be who would represent England and Washington. She instructed him to send Patrick Dean, a man who told Pym that would uphold her interests. However, the interests of the Foreign Secretary were not the same as her own. 
The problem Penn had was that he had already been decided upon David Ornsby to be the U.S. Ambassador. Yet before he could object, the Prime Minister had moved on. He began to wonder with if Prime Minister would ever allow him to make his own decisions. David Ornsby, uh, we'll just follow Thatcher for now. She, she seems like she, she knows what she's doing. She's got a lot of influence. It would not be a good idea to go against her. So, just because, I mean, look at that influence. Would you just look at it? 90-some percent. Oh, wait, hold on. Maybe 100 percent. She has 101 percent! Maggie has gone above and beyond what is needed. And she got 101 percent. How do you get 101 percent? France sides with Germany. Oh, that's not good. Surprising? Yes. Very, very surprising. Then again, I guess everyone hates Burgundy so much that they're willing to ally with Germany. Oh. Artillery. Anti. Uh, well. Uh, uh, mm. Oh, let's grab. Oh, that's a little bit ahead of time. This is all artillery stuff. Which is cool, but it's a little bit ahead of time. Tank stuff? Armor? Yeah, maybe work on our armor a little bit. Let's actually get a better tank. That'd be a good idea. Since we want to use tanks, so. Engineers. Uh, more soft attack. 67. Oh, helicopter engines. I didn't realize it. Helicopter engines. Signal companies. Maintenance. Uh, maintenance companies actually might be really good on our vehicles, so. Currently get how much? 1.1 a day? That's not bad. Could be better, but whatever. Uh, death of Emperor Asian Goro Puyi. No, not Puyi, man. Not Puyi. Oh, it's Reich's Ruslan, not even it's a Reich's Protectorate. Protectorate, not even Reich's Commissariat. Oh. All right, just cut it down just by a little bit. We almost by 0.1 billion. Good, we've invested in that, and then new SPGs, SBT artillery. That's probably not what we're going to do. I would love to get more efficiency that way. This was okay because we wanted APCs. But, I'm not going to go MBT artillery, tank artillery, I'm not really about that. So let's get this one. <clears throat> oh, before we do that though, let's double check. Our loyalty is... Uh, let's do another one first. The defensive efforts... Nah, still more loyalty, rebuild the navy. Focus on carriers. Hmm. Destroyers, battleships, why would we build battleships? Battleship screens. Screens for the carrier, destroyers. Oh, destroyers for both, huh? Uh, we can now build four new cruisers. Battleship or two battle cruisers. Well, that's really good. More, a lot of anti-air. It's not bad. Fleet coordination, sort of efficiency, 20%. It's pretty god darn awesome. Let's go with the rebuild the Air, Royal Air Force, though, because I've kind of ignored that completely so far. Ever since this disastrous performance in the Second World War, the Royal Air Force has been left to wither and rot decrepit airstrips across England. A sorry state indeed for an armada thought beyond its time before the Luftwaffe tore to shreds. In agreement with the Ministry of Defense, the Thatcher administration pledges to rebuild the RA RAF into a state worthy of protecting England's heavenly maim. It will hopefully do better than it had in 1943 after all is said and done. Faster production of gun of planes, the Royal Spare Force. Oh boy, that does not sound very good. And efficiency is... Okay. 57.5. That's not bad. Um, I would like to... Actually, we don't even need to get any more influence. Let's get some more elite support, though. Let's visit some urban centers. Good. This decreases by, like I said before, it's so easy to get. Lot of support's not even funny. <coughs> Honestly, by increasing our GDP, it's, it's almost not going up that much, so... I know this is a bad idea, but if I keep doing liquid reserves, only half of the money that we have in our liquid reserves actually go to, like, the actual GDP. Only half, which really sucks. China modernizes. Wow. Perhaps this will be the next Chinese century. Oh, God, I hope not. Unless they want to be an ally, because I'm, I'm totally cool with being an ally with them. They joined the OFN, but it looks like they, uh... Oh, no, oh, oh, shh. Nike is doing fascist. Okay, maybe not. Slave of the Summer. I have to play as China someday. I will play as China. At the time of this recording, though, I don't think they're completely ready yet. <clears throat> Their path, I think, is still technically incomplete, but we'll see what happens. We'll read that very soon. Now, let's go ahead and grab Overlooking Washington. Having sown the seeds of a new relationship with Americans, the time has come for an English ambassador to be sent to Washington. This will mark the first times the U.S. and England have worked together in decades. It may be only an ambassador, but it signifies the times that are indeed changing. Once the bond with America has been rekindled, England will not be as alone in the world as she thought. So, the Royal Spaffles. <coughs> Excuse me. Thatcher, I, Dennis, Spotswood, Chief of the Air Staff. I thought it would be best to deliver this report to you personally, ma'am. The RAF is woefully depleted. Thatcher opened up the thick manila folder in which the report in question was held. She flipped through it, trying to read as quickly as possible how many planes do you have at the moment. To give you an idea, the RAF currently has 200 jet fighter aircraft, of which only <clears throat> 47 are currently operable. It doesn't end there either. There's a significant shortage of capable pilots and officers. 
In addition, most of the old German aircraft we have were simply worn out. Even if we got them out of the shops, they aren't likely to last very long. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm sorry about this. I see, said Thatcher. Well, it looks like as if though we have some work to do. We certainly do, and I will be right back. All right, my friends, sorry about that. I apologize for coughing or trying to clear my voice all the time. Um, I went to go get some water, so. Uh, also, I did check the comments. Someone recommended from yesterday's video also that we should reform or reorganize the military, which we're already doing, so. Always keep that in mind. Always, always, always. Let's see, what is that? Popular support? Nah, we good. Very loyal. It better be very loyal. And as well as, yeah, that one's pretty good. 92 factories, not bad. We're, keep, we're gonna continue making more civilian factories because I love, love civilian factories a lot. Even though eventually we're not gonna need them, maybe. We can still probably use them, but not gonna be super important. I keep building up Sussex, that is good. What do we have over here? Hold a rally, social change. Wait, hold on. I can get 3% more influence. I mean, I we already have 104%, so... You know, we could stop cutting the civilian budget, but... If the, oh, we actually have a deficit. Oh, shnikes, nope. Oh man, look, if we just cut civilian spending, we gain like 1.4 billion dollars. Jesus Christ, that's amazing. I know I shouldn't be doing this, I sh but oh, we're slowly getting rid of that. We're slowly getting rid of that. The Great Caucus Revolt overlooking Washington. Great. The new special relationship influence will increase. Remember, Italy did join the OFN last time too, so that's always good to remember. Fighters, RF bases, 300... Why would I do that? I can just build that. 300 million to the national debt? I mean, that might help GDP, but still. Yeah, I like to do this more. V. Estol. Oh, man. That looks amazing. Trainer pilots. Uh, that's not bad. I actually kind of like that. That's a pretty good bonus. Air experience gain goes up by quite a bit. Ace generation chance isn't bad. Air accident chance goes down. More air attack and ground attack factor. Oh, yeah. I like that one more, though. Defensive efforts. We can wait a little bit longer. I'm gonna go back over here. How about the OFM? So, the new special relationship. Over the course of history, the U.S. and the U.K. have always been close, sharing a common language and a similar cultural identity. The Prime Minister now seeks to use these similarities to create a new partnership with America, one that suitably reflects the intimacy of our past. However, Thatcher is unlikely to permit any deal to be too f in the favor of the U.S. She much prefer England to remain in control of its own destiny. What? We can't turn England into a colony? Come on. What? What's wrong with you? Um, populous decreased by 3% for even more. I think I'll... Well, let's see. Populist. Elite support. Oh, you know what? Actually, we can afford this one. <clears throat> Industrial equipment? Let's see. I've not really looked, th looked at this very much. Rudimentary manufacturing lines. Do we actually decrease? It's going up by two. Actually, that's not bad. So we have this one. We want to get over here, so this will actually be much better. Let's go and do that. I don't mind losing a little bit of influence. We already have over 100%, so... 8181. Awesome. And 100% influence, even though I thought it was supposed to decrease by three, not 4%, but whatever. And... Look at that. <clears throat> I'm going up by three months. Oh my goodness. Come on, boys. <clears throat> hmm. Maybe I'm coughing so much is because I'm having all this coffee. I don't know. Matai overthrown by Arab administration. I've run a kick it to save the nation from death, but not his administration. Uh, their voice in Westminster, the state of English military, good. Nice. And to yeah, even better. 68. Oh, it's almost 68. So, that means... Better guns, advanced infantry rifles. Is that like the FAL? No, the S-L-R-A-I. That looks like an FAL, huh. But it's British. What do you expect? Cool. Happy 68, my friends. New year, new us. And by new us, I mean more slashing. New special relationship? Yes, please. The Germanic or Germanian problem. Approaching the hunt. With Pym sufficiently convinced the merits of Thatcher's plan, the time has come for him and the Prime Minister to visit Germania together. After all their, their arrival in the German capital, lots have come to many agreements with the Germans from trade to future military relations. A peaceful resolution has already been made with Germany over Cornwall, though tensions are still hanging over the two countries. These negotiations would, negotiations would not be easy, but they would be essential in placating the Germans. Yeah, well, New Year, January 67, we must, or 68, we should go explore what the Germans have to offer. The heirs of Babylon. Uh, I don't think we've ever gotten this far in, into the game. Maybe, maybe not. Here's the Babylon. It's a newly released fiction book detailing an alternative universe in which the Third Reich lost its struggle against the de decadent capitalist West and the mongrel states of Russia after a beloved Fuhrer was cut down by snipers below in 35. Written by Cornish author Antony Beevor, Heirs of Babylon details the lives of people living in a divided Berlin, London, a Londonium, 
Alexandria and Philadelphia, the new capital of the Americas. Much of the world is, well, new capital. It was the original capital, wasn't it? Much of the world is divided between the Imperial Dominion of Britannia, who have reclaimed their traditional thrones of Germany and France. Wow. The United American Federation, whose border stretches from Northern Pole to the Southern Pole. Yes, please. And inside Pan-Eurasian Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. Ferdinand Featherston is an investigator and a Britannian defective with the lessons to kill and beholden only to her ma ma Britannic majesty. Seeking or searching for his wife in Red Europe, he is swept up by in a world-shaking plot in Berlin. The chase takes him to America, France, Africa, and finally to Gibraltar in a series of daring escapes and high-speed gun battles. The crux of the novel's event is a Gibraltar missile crisis, a tense nuclear standoff between the Dominion and the Pan-Eurasian Union, while the United Federation seeks to undermine both sides and provoke a war for their own purposes. The novel ends in uncertainty, with tanks messing across the Gibraltar border and an American fleet refusing to answer uh, hails circling like vultures. <clears throat> Will Ferdinand use the Dominion's most powerful weapon? Will he rescue the woman he loves? What a childish fantasy. Yeah, I would love to continue increasing their abilities to exercise and get more arm XP, but we still can't afford it with the artillery. Actually, we're doing okay here, too. If that's the case, you know what? Go ahead and train, then. All y'all need to train. 95 factories, not bad. Technologies, 102%. Uh, let's see. Decrease pop... At least for... Proving more jobs. Uh, we could do that. And they are pretty much where they have to be. And they are pretty much where they have to be as well. We're going to increase our efficiency eventually, so approaching the hun. Let's go ahead and do that. We need more job growth. Uh, continue slashing the budget, even though it really doesn't matter too much. And pay off a little bit more of the debt. Nice. So, we'll do that very soon after we do... Hmm. What is this? Uh, cap. Factory Alpha will actually be really nice. We can actually make more stuff. Uh, let's do the Harrier program. Disposing slow, ungainly, and antiquated fighters is part and parcel of securing England's skies. In lieu of old spite fires of meteors, a consortium of English defense contractors has designed a promising jet plane labeled as the Harrier, far superior to either in the equal its foreign contemporaries and specifications. The defense minister recommends ex expediting development thereof as much as we can. Second life is no exaggeration for the effects of our first Harrier wings will provide the RAF. In good time, the world will soon fear England's very own birds of prey. Very good. So, we sh who shall approach the Hun? Sitting alone in his Whitehall office, Pym awaited his next meeting with the Prime Minister. There have been a great deal of these talks recently, so Pym had to become more and more frustrating, even slowly becoming tiresome. But sometimes he wondered what was even the point of trying to sway Thatcher. This particular meeting was to be about this appointment of an ambassador to the right. He had already handpicked an able candidate, Roger Jackling. The two men already shared similar plans on how England should handle the German behemoth. Jackling's abilities had already been proven within the Foreign Office. Except this meant little to Thatcher. She wasted no time telling Pym who, was, who he was to send to Germania. Her nomination was Frank Roberts, an outspoken believer in what he called German containment. The fact that even Pym had to choose an ambassador did not appear to have even crossed her mind. All was greatly upset at Pym. The more he tried to negotiate with the Prime Minister, the more she ignored him. It was enough to make him consider neglecting uh, Thatcher's order. Hmm... Hold on, so I don't really understand. So if I choose either one of these two, what's going to happen? Because it seems like if I just choose whoever Thatcher wants, it seems like he follows the order or his orders. But if I choose the other person, I'm just following the orders of himself. I'm just following Pym. I, I, uh, I just kind of know, like, I wish it would have said, like, Thatcher demands or orders this, and then Pym goes behind her back anyways and select someone else. Honestly, it seems like we might want to push Pym out of office. Um, containment. I'm just gonna go with Frank Roberts, I guess. Yeah, let's go with that for now. I just wish it was a little bit more detailed, like, because there's a little bit of a nuance position there. Like, yeah, I don't know, just, it, I wish it was a little bit more clear about which direction or who did what kind of I don't know maybe I'm overthinking it maybe I'm not thinking it, thinking through it enough maybe I'm just mentally going wee in my head but I probably am that's over here we could probably cut down just a little bit ah the Harrier program great because I do want to grab maybe a little bit more chromium do we need chromium what do we need chromium for uh let's see obviously ships 68 will be done uh tanks might need them we need one more for full efficiency Tungsten. Tungsten, eh? Give you some of that for that. Tungsten, I think, would probably be best. I'd love more rubber, but let's go with tungsten for now. I'll grab it from, not America, into China. Uh, let's build up our relations with India. There we go. <clears throat> uh, a place in Germania. 
Soon England will be able to send a small envoy into Germany to establish a strong relationship with Germany. This will bring the UK closer to Germany and solidify its position as their equal, not as their puppet. However, the choices of the ambassador remains to be made. Thatcher will want to push for a more hardline candidate who will not be bent to German pressure, but Pym will likely, likely per prefer to appoint the ambassador himself. The trade between the two is bound to become much more noticeable. Uh, it's always good to keep the pact under control as well. So, 103% influence, good. Uh, some of you guys are actually done training, and just in case, I'm going to put you guys up here. You know, I don't know what the Scottish might be doing. The Scottish might need to be put down. They, they had a coup, so... Ah, so we want to read this, go right ahead. Gains cores! Hey, we get cores! And more critical population factors, stability, war support, and less damage garrisons? Yes, please. 46,000 becomes... 50,000? For almost 50,000. How many people live in Wales? Uh, 600,000... Ah, so about 3 million people. Oh, that's cool. Don't know much about Wales, but that's okay. 1.12. Urban centers. I kind of kind of have to do this. Hey, 83 and 83, not bad. Hey, look at that. Look at those factories. Now that's beautiful. That's just beautiful, man. Over 100 factories. I think we're doing pretty darn well. Oh, let's, we're really trying to build up a lot of uh, factories here. Let's get that one done first, and then we'll put a civilian factory back on there. What our future shall hold. Relations with the Germans are still somewhat hostile. We still have to tread carefully. We want to avoid wrecking the progress of our two countries have already made. A treaty will have to be signed to help normalize our new relationship. Assuring non-aggression will also be a significant step towards greater cooperation. However, much as we may distress them, we also remember that they need us as much as we need them. Yes. Oh, good. So we made that done. Made that done. We finished it. Uh, go ahead and do Sussex then. Because we already have max out infrastructure there. Oh, man. This will finish in a month. April 20th? Um, a month, give or take six weeks total. Still making more military factors, which is nice. We still have 13 down here, so that's good. Oh, yeah. You guys went to war with each other. Yeah. The Congolese Republic. Hmm. Bea Africa. Iberian Union. Oh. It's a stable union. That's good. Oh, good for you guys. I guess. Uh, Flamethrowers for guys? Why not? Flamethrowers seem kind of nice. Alright, so not bad. APCs definitely need some factories on them. We just need more military factories. Oh, look at that, 80,000. Nice. Nice. Visit factories. So we're stuck, basically. Wait, efficiency is slowly going down still. And so is our loyalty, which is fine. We are not afraid. Many years have passed since we were humbled by the Germany, or by the Germans, and forced to suffer underneath them for decades. Thankfully, this humiliating part of our past has already been left behind, and we will no longer live in the field of Cornwall Garrison and stand eye to eye with the Germans. At long last, England sounds independent, and no matter, it will not be easy for Germany to take that away from us again. Well, we'll see what happens. I mean, we're increasing our budget, liquid reserves... You know what, let's go ahead and put it back into the GDP for now. I think that'd be okay. You don't always want to just cut down on debt, even though that's a good idea, though. So, very loyal, somewhat efficient. Good, we don't even have to think about it for now. Meeting the industrial giants, I'm thinking I might do that again. We already have so much influence. Yeah, and even more industrial stuff. Go and do that. I'm really pushing for industry right now. For a month. Now, it's not a lot, but if we keep doing that, we're going to do really well. And actually, we have a better GDP now. Because we have a better GDP and we're spending more and doing less, I'm still going to cut this down, though. I still want to cut, 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 cut. Death on Antonio de Oliveria Salazar. One Caldillo is down. Oh, Portuguese territory. Huh. That's not good. Nice. Slowly cutting it down, having a very good balanced budget. We are not afraid, but now it is time to do the Germanian problem. England may have raised, released itself from Germany's clutches, but we're not completely free. Germany's military power is still immense, and if the German leadership were to order another invasion, there probably be, would be very little we could do to stop them. However, if we didn't ally those willing and able to protect us, the people of England would sleep much more soundly. We would need to turn to the U.S. and guarantee their, uh, guarantee their military support for the sake of the safety of England. Absolutely. Absolutely. flippin' -lutely. Yeah, 88%, that's pretty nice. I can't imagine we actually got up to that much. We still have 100% influence, though. So. Burgundian bunkers. The beginning of a Burgundian spring or just more of a corruption. Oh boy, what's going on? Swiss government reports that Burgundy has begun the construction of a series of large bunkers in the Western Alps. Uh, Burgundy? Son? What, what are you doing? Are you supposed to be doing research like that? Let's see. 53 days. I'll do some more of that. That's nice. Good stuff. I guess GDP won't matter if they try to nuke everyone. Yeah, keep building this one up. That'd be good. So we can build those military factories even faster. Yeah, construction spending. We're going to really slash construction spending a lot once we're done building everything, but which will probably never happen. Uh, hold a rally. Yeah, we could, but 100% is already pretty nice. 
Election season. Whether we want it or not, the royal divorce was forced upon us to pick sides in the upcoming election. No matter the, what the Prime Minister Holm has made, Holm made plan, we'll make a decision. Should we be campaigning with Macmillan or bring forward change to our country just so desperately needs? Or should we work with Thatcher that our country may save us and start to build? Um. Yeah, we're going to go for the royal party. I guess it's election season again. I can't imagine that we lose the election. We've been doing very, 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 very well. Uh, add for popularity. Um, I like I like to convince Southern Wales to, or just Wales in general, to vote for us. But you know that's just me. All right, so we finish that up. We'll come back and do that in a little bit. Let's go ahead and go over to jet engine innovation. Let's rebuild the navy. So today the navy is a shadow of its former self. That was not the case a mere generation ago. It was a very symbol of the English empires of British. The British powers, influence, and power, and majesty, securing its expansive waters and protecting its every subject wherever the corner of the globe they stood foot upon. Alas, much of it now exists only as scrap metal in Davy Jones' locker, and in the hearts of those men who yearn for a past unjustly ended. Our new found a lot of gas in mind, and it's just that the time are, has come to remind the world of the old English pains lines. Britannia rules the waves. Well, we'll see what happens if we can get enough fuel. Um, hopefully they don't get that much more influence. Oh, oh, now we can actually campaign. That's not good. 40. We're pretty close there. Oh yeah, that's good. Southern Wales. They're actually we're actually have to we have to campaign. God dang it, guys. That's not your guys' fault, but this is yeah. Uh, countryside. There you go. 85, 85. Not bad. 102 percent. Not bad. Hmm. And we actually finished training our guys too. That's pretty good. I wonder if we can make them 40 combat with. We have enough army XP. It's going to really hurt our manpower, but that's okay. Uh, okay, Southern Wales likes us. Northern Wales. How about you? Military, uh, no, 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 There you go. Slash that debt. All right, and... Do they flip yet? They did. Do it again. Now, this is nice. Ah, uh, rebuild the Royal Navy. We'll do that as soon as we do defensive efforts. Elite Army. Oh, yes. Advanced training methods. Mildly decreased. Well, I'll do defensive efforts. Now that we, all the rebel guns have been silenced throughout England, we now have time to properly prepare our country's defenses. Yet there is still much to be done after the fair Abian, Albion is simply descended from his foes. We have to make sure several decisions, but whatever we choose, we must do. We must be certain that it will keep our people safe. The defense of our homeland must be prioritized before anything else. Not nothing. Not for nothing is never another sea line. A slogan shared by Englishmen, regardless of politics. Oh, uh, we'll keep an eye on this. We'll keep an eye on pretty much everything here. Uh, let's see, Navy. The new Navy. Oh, yeah. yeah so. Ah, uh, Defense Secretary Pym, said Margaret Thatcher, closing a manila folder on her desk. I'm glad you got here so quickly. Pym was a short man with brown hair and a frog like sort of face. He sat down opposite Thatcher at his desk and said, Yes, ma'am. Uh, we already know who Pym is, I think, probably. After the war with the Germans and then with ourselves, England finds herself severely lacking in her capability to wage war on the sea. Our Navy is heavily depleted and I ask you to oversee the commission of new ships. Pym scratched his head ponderously. Hmm, I think there's a few ways we could th strengthen the Royal Navy. She needs a new flagship, Liberal Victory in Canada. Okay. Uh, first, in my opinion, maybe the battleship focus? The Americans and the Japanese are having great success with the carrier zone. That should hold out her hand to stop them from continuing. Do whatever you think is necessary. A good Prime Minister knows what she knows and what she doesn't. And I know I know nothing about naval matters. Very well, Prime Minister. Thank you. Oh. That's kind of cool. Build the first round of rockets. That's really awesome. Advanced infantry rifles. Good. Started. We need political power. Well, we always need political power. Uh, let's grab that one too. And let's make some more updated rifles. Good. Anything here? That deficit looks amazing. I wish countries could balance their budget at least. <sighs> but as long as your economy grows faster than you're getting debt, it's totally okay, right? Totally okay. We're gonna make sure Northern Wales really loves us. Uh, you might, well, we might as well do that. Beautiful so far. Another civilian factory, great. Good, good, good. More debt, lower the debt. And then we'll increase the budget, or GDP next. Oh, we actually have a ship, whoa! We actually have an early battleship, oh, early battleship, oh, oh, I don't know about that, man. Hmm. We should, we could research, like, other ships, but, I don't know, man. Mm hmm. This, this, the reason I did not make carriers is because this looks so bad. It, it looks like it's empty, but it's actually not. Anti-air. Oh, level 1. Let's get 4, then. Radar, 3 instead of 2. Carrier engine, 2. There you go. Um, This is okay. Instead of making that, let's get earlier carrier. It's only an earlier carrier. 
Oh, man. Strengthening out the South here. So, Scotland is a perfect example of how a liberal democracy really works. While <clears throat> sellouts and socialists jostle for the highest office, the true power lies within a small clique of military officials who would reduce the entire country to ash if they believed it could find another tank division. By bringing Scotland into the fold, we shall do away with this petty motion or mode of politics and turn the many squandered resources in the North Sea over to a thriving competitive marketplace. The Scottish military will be, of course, dig their heels into regard to unification. But dealing with politicians who as we do, dissidents in our own party will help produce results. If they prove still recalcitrant after the Royal Party treatment, well, we'll see how a proper military, uh, national military operates. We shall bring order from the hills to the highlands. Uh, I don't want to do that one yet. I want to finish the focus first, so we're not going to click on this yet, just because I want to finish defensive efforts first. <clears throat> good. Ooh, good. Uh, let's get some more armor, actually, on these guys, too. That'd be nice. And more breakthroughs is always nice. Our current motorized divisions which are just really tanks, so that's not bad. For our own infantry, though, we could not pierce them, which is fine. I'm, I really don't want to make these guys 40 combo with, but we can't really support it yet. Alright, so, we shall bring order from the hills to the highlands. Give it a day first and see what happens. Tanks are coming along. And can we do stuff about Scotland? Yes, we can. We can't do anything else yet. Yeah, we can't do anything else, so that's why I waited. Fortress up north. There's one last obstacle in the way of restoring the UK. It's our ancient rival Scotland. If dealing with Wales is anything to go by, they should fall under our, th our authority soon. However, they will prove to be quite an indomitable foe. They've spent years apprehensively preparing to defend the Republic. Well, they kind of had a coup already. The border is heavily fortified. If no peaceful settlement is found, the resulting war will be the bloodiest in history in the British Isles. Oh, let's make it bloody. I'm sorry, Dunehammer Gaming, but... Mama Maggie has got plans. <clears throat> I might even hold another rally, though. <clears throat> Very good. Let's see. Oh, Bink, you okay? Oh, my cat's here once again. Yeah? You okay? Oh, you want to leave? Okay, you want to leave us and ditch us, huh, for Scotland? Alright, baby. Bye-bye. And there goes our handsome animal. Ah, the fortress up north. Oh, Scotland. We are willing to negotiate, though. We do not wish to fight with the people of Scotland. They are almost as ready as we are for war. The battle among the border would be bloody, and the havoc inside the cities would be terrifying, and scars would be left behind. It would take several lifetimes to fade. But rest assured, they know that we are not. We are more than willing to take such sacrifices to restore our once united kingdom. And we're actually making more divisions. Like, these divisions, I would say, are quality divisions. They're not the best we've ever made, but... Oh, we're still doing this stuff down here. They're still pretty good. Um, Honestly, we got, we're pretty dominating everywhere. Even whales were dominating. So, let's dominate even more, then. Beautiful. Just beautiful. And we have a little more attack, a little more defense. A great conspiracy, huh? And Japanese occupied China. Huh. Cool. <sighs> Industrial giants. I want to do that again. But, let's get some more... Let's inf oh. Well, I did that, and we don't get even more influence. Okay. So, if you choose it, you lose influence. I thought we could go up to, like, 101, 102, 103, 4... Uh, percent, but I guess not. Good to know. Very good to know. Let's go actually here. Let's go and edit this. Throw on those maintenance companies first. That'll be very beneficial. And then you guys. Uh, anti tank. How much anti tank do we have? Because getting even more might be really good since enemies might have tanks themselves. But we might be able to beat them up anyways. Anti air. Uh, let's see. We don't have any anti air, so let's not do that. How many things of equipment do we have? We need more battle tanks. It's fine. IFBs are looking okay. Oh, we actually have enough artillery for now, but we don't have enough that I'd really want to use it for. Uh, contact pro-unionist officers. In spite of the Scottish government's vigorous attempts to defend their nation, they've overlooked the swaths of pro-unionist soldiers that exist amidst their army's ranks. Once they've been contacted by the MI6, they'll be very useful in bringing down the Republic from within, and if the Scottish government refuses to reunify diplomatically, they'll explode every fort, every road, and every government office that they can. Thus, we will make it clear that Scottish security is nothing more than an illusion. Their territory will be reintegrated by any means necessary. Oh, they lose organization. Good. Now look at all that political power. So, um, meet with industrial giants, because I am gunning for that stuff down there. Uh, don't even look up there. 90%, 82%. Uh, let's see. This wouldn't be too bad to do. What, increase urban centers, hold a speech in parliament. Now nah, we're good. Gain stability. Oh, we can actually gain more stability, too. I kind of don't mind that, as long as we get enough influence. Let's, let's visit urban centers. 79%, not great, but 95%. That is... Oh, we got another factory. Oh, we're done building civilian factories? I don't think so. I really don't think so. Ah, yes. Another great place. Northern Wales. We'll actually invest in Wales. Of all places, we actually are going to invest in Wales. Let's 
for their GDP a little bit more this time. Oh, taking control of the country, doing a great job with it, I'd say. Well, doing an okay job. Look at that, five a month. That is awesome. Loved by the people. Oh, we actually lost political power. And we shall do mountain warfare. If we are to force, oh, or if we are forced into a war while we have to stamp out every Scottish nationalist throughout the land, that includes the rugged and easily defensible mountains of the north. At the moment, our army is not prepared to fight in such terrain. They will have to be trained to fight amongst the mountains if we are to have the hope of removing the Scottish army entirely. Oh, we get more attack. Yes, for mountaineers. Yes, please. Do you even have mountaineers, though? Hmm. It's a good question to ask. Actually, before we want to go to war, though, we got to see if uh, we have any planes we can use. Uh, jet fighters, jet fighters, jet... No. Basic jet cast. I don't mind that. But I'm going to save those for the, the reserve. We just need more military factories. Nope. Nope. We still have a deficit if we stop cutting. But we really don't need that. Good. What's our credit rating? That would be kind of cool if actually we did get a credit rating. That's actually a good question to ask. What is our credit rating? Huh. Let's get some more popular support next, probably. That would be pretty good. Uh, if we want to campaign some more. West Midlands. The choice of direction. Nobody said the campaigns hadn't tried their hardest. Every possible deal that they made, uh... Uh, this is just more election stuff. The Royal Party wins. Yeah, I don't... We, we already kind of knew that. What is this? Free... Oh, free dockyards! Cool! Um... Mm, I could probably use more screens. What is this? Is this a screen? What 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 what, what even is this? I'm not really sure. Let's see. Ah, this must be a cruiser. Okay, light cruiser, light cruiser, light battery. Yeah, this is definitely a light cruiser. Uh, Anti-air four. We have enough naval XP. Fire control. You know what? I don't like using this one, but we'll do it anyways. Radar. Radar is important. Uh, yes, yes, and then yes. Hmm. Let's get rapid fire guns. Like reserves. We'll go with torpedo launchers, aircraft facilities. Ooh. Helicopter pad, that seems really awesome. What is this? Medium batteries. Heavy no. Secondary batteries. And ah, let's get some anti-air. Anti-air is gonna be really, really oppressive towards us. Uh let's see. That's not bad, not bad. Armor's not bad. Reliability is not great. HP's gone up, fuel usage is fine, self-detection. I'm gonna get more anti-air. Probably, just because I'd love to throw in torpedoes, but, hmm. These guys are here just to destroy anti-air for the most part, in my opinion. That costs us almost all of our naval XP, but that's okay. That's totally okay. Oh, mountain warfare. Good. Yeah, that's going to be important to make. We're going to need some more uh, chromium, which is fine. So, mountain warfare. Uh, bridge the gap. Reun reunification with Scotland is imperative. If we were to regain our national prestige, the sooner we start work on the unification, the better. They, uh, triumph for the hardliners, very cool, may be hostile towards us to begin with, but they will quickly learn that we are not going to submit to their demands. The Scots will not remain independent much longer. Scotland has to be reintegrated no matter the cost. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, so build a second round of dockyards. Cool. We will soon. And change the countryside? Yes, please. Never enough factories. Never enough. Man, that GDP, man. Hmm. Not bad. Really not bad. Come on, Scotland. What do you got? Actually, how strong is Scotland? That's a good question to ask. Black market trading? Uh, ah, they're revolting. Hello. Wow. Scotland is not doing well. Minus 80% stability. It's no war support. They're a Republic of Scotland led by Douglas Wimberley, but he overtook the country in a coup. Oh. Special Intelligence Department. An oppressive state. Yeah, I think they probably want to join, make them join the UK. Or for, we'll form the UK with them. Itchy trigger. Scotland could go down a dark path. Oh, wait, we're not doing a focus. Focus, my bad. No wonder we're getting so much political power. Alright then. Bridge the gap. Oh, wait. Did it not go? Huh. Okay, well, whatever. Well, let's see what happens. Let's go in and have you guys come out. One, two. Uh, have you guys come out as well. Actually, I'm going to finally split you guys in half. There we go. It's not ideal, but it actually kind of works. It actually does kind of work. And then you guys do this as well over here too. Uh, that should be pretty good. So, bridge gap. Conference begins. But let's see. I want to read another focus first. Oh, oh, five more years. Oh my goodness, an entire another part of the focus tree completely unlocked. Oh yeah, five more years. Victory in the royal party has once again captured the hearts and minds of the British people and soared to electoral triumph. The nation is once more under our control and behind the scenes, the Iron Lady is preparing her second term as Prime Minister. I did not realize that would happen. That's awesome. 
And the conference begins once we invest in something else, maybe. Nope, that's okay. So a group of diplomats walk onto a plane at Heathrow. It leaves the ground early in the morning, and in an hour or so it will be in Edinburgh. When it lands, the negotiations will begin. Negotiations, negotiations that will determine the fate of the British Isles and the people on it. Negotiations that, if successful, will unify Scotland with England once again. Negotiations that may fall, finally allow us to take the mantle of the UK of old. That rule will be hard, though. The Scottish will certainly drive the hardest bargain they can, but they will, not be, they will not surrender their freedom for nothing in return. And failure on our part will certainly lead to another massive war on the island, one which will exact a large cost and lives on both sides. The arrival of the English. Well, we'll see what happens. Uh, hmm. Flat out rejected, of course. The plane returns early. The people inside are dreading what they must report to Ellen, but it's already common knowledge at this point, and both Scotland and England know it. The negotiations have failed. In fact, they can never they never really began. Over the last few days, the diplomats and negotiators sat idle in the hotel in Edinburgh as they tried to get in contact with the Scottish government. But Scotland refused to meet, rejecting the possibility of any deal with England, and thus they had to go home without any hope of a peaceful settlement. <clears throat> both countries are in a panic. Our citizens are panicked over the inevitability of war. Our troops are mobilizing, and so are our enemies. We now have no choice but to win a conflict with our northern neighbor and do so quickly. So be it. They chose their path, and now we shall as well. We shall bring you into the fold, kicking and screaming if necessary. And some more, some more fact. Five more years? You bet your butt we'll go, get five more years. Uh, 30 more civilian factories? Great. Uh, pay off more debt. That's beautiful. Oh my gosh. This is just so cool looking at. Oh my goodness. We still need to do this one though. Uh, is there a focus we can do? Oh, down here. Gentlemen, we have work to do. Thatcher has returned to Den 10 Downing Street to continue leading the royal party. Her ministers, advisors, and allies wait her for the first meetings so they may establish the government agenda for the next five years. The celebrations are over. There's work to be done again. Good. Good, good, good. The doctrine of the debate. So, destruction from within is the best plan, says the Special Forces Man. Scotland is, has a de decent number of people who would be ideologically agreeable with us. We should give them guns, some explosives, and then have them go at it. The nation will crumble in it within a week. I disagree, says the Army Man. The only way to, to win a war is to straight smash through the enemy lines. We'll have a quick Scottish collapse after that. We only need to prepare ourselves to attack through the mountains. Oh, an attack must be done, but we're thinking of it the wrong place, says the Navy Man. Scapa Flow is a major Navy, Navy base, and it's in the north. If we take it in a quick operation, we can knock out their most important, terrifying arm and have a second front on them as well. The debate goes on and on, but England must have a plan, so who do we prefer? Let's see. Despotism. Yeah. Uh, oh, what does that say? Revolting. Yeah, that's what I thought. Let's see. So their navy is actually pretty good. They have two carriers. Uh, let's see. This seems like they're okay. Destroyers, heavy cruisers. They're kind of like us. So, 5 to 11 divisions. I'm thinking we can probably just smash straight through, probably. Frontal army assault. Because uh, I'm not really using special forces, so frontal army assault is the plan. This might go very, very, very poorly for us. But I hope not. I really hope not. Military officer. Uh, you know what? We're not going to cut this down for that. Because first of all, it's not costing us that much, to be honest with you. And we need to, to attack. So, gentlemen, we have work to do. Second union does not exist. Good. Uh, let's see. Punish the traitors. Gain more influence, less stability. Thank our voters. Visit our donors. Yeah, why not? Our royalist donors were fundamental in providing us with the funding necessary to campaign to, so extensively throughout the nation. The Prime Minister will visit every major donor to thank them in person for spending their hard-earned um, money for the cause and show them other dedication to the Royalist Manifesto. All right, Prime Minister, I'm glad you've see, seen the sense of good old-fashioned frontal assault. Let's go over the plans. Our greatest chance of victory comes with a breakthrough in the Royal Regions. If we get through, the Scots will fall and we'll be in Edinburgh within the fortnight. That's how it worked in every battle ever. Once that gets through, they wipe out the other. And we expect this war to be no different. First, our task is to prepare our forces for the job. We can put together a unit of mounted troops for the job. Most loyalists from Scotland. The job is a breakthrough. Once they're set up, we'll launch a border war to see if the Scots are up to task. If they aren't, we're going to do what Hitler couldn't and finally break their lines. Oh. Oh, it's like the Romans. They couldn't break through the lines, huh? Earlier on. Hold a speech. More to support. Nope. Military training. We could do that, but nah. Uh, nothing really here that I'm really interested in. Ah, oh, anti-air. Better. Good. Good. Can't do that yet. Grab that. Improve anti-tank. Advanced anti-tank. Good. Mm, we could, we might invest in this just to get more attack and defense when we fight those guys. The 52nd Lowlanders and the Northern Pennies, uh, a special unit gathers. Men from Scotland disaffected by the recent political trends of the country. Men familiar with the terrain of the country. Men skilled in mountain warfare. The 52nd Lowlands, Lowlanders and the title of this new unit. It's a joke name. Referencing the 51st Highlanders, the premier division of the Scottish military. Only this time they're working with the English, and they're prepared to test their skills with a far more famous rival. Look before you leap. Oh, come on, man. Can we get some more stuff here? Uh, let's see. What is their division like? A combat with. That is not ideal. Highlanders? Yeah. You gotta do a little better than that, man. Oh, wait. We have no... Hmm. 
special forces? Uh, I think they're under there. We're gonna lower their strength. Well, not really. I mean, lower their organization by a little bit, but you know what? Go ahead and save it like that and put on nothing else, I guess, for now. It just gives them way more soft attack. Maybe we have to. Maybe we actually have to research that stuff first. Uh, yeah, yeah. 92% elite support. That's great. That is really great. Look, before we leave, Prime Minister, everything is set up. The sec 50 seconds is ready, and our forces are deployed at the border. We're now facing off against Scotland, and they're not blinking. And war will break any day now. It's time for a little test. In a certain area of the border, there's an area where the fencing is not clearly marked. We will attack a Scottish patrol there when it comes around. It'll be backed up with artillery and massive divisional support. It's vague enough that nobody can quite blame us, and it'll allow us to actually test the Scottish defenses before we have to move in. Of course, the downside is that we have actually start a war, but it's expected at this point. Begin. We should be able to win. I mean, they have one division here, maybe two. Okay, they have how many? We have a little slightly better general. And they have four divisions, but we have, like, six. So. The Anglo-Scottish War. The entire island is consumed by sirens from Wick to Dover. Civilian crowds into air raid shelters. Fearful of enemy attacks. Children are being taught to use gas masks and sent away to the countryside again. Homeowners are told to set up shelters in the bottom of their homes to skip the enemy air attacks. Those especially close to the front lines are being are begged to stay in place. At least they clog the roads for the fighting men. The border regions. So long as scenes of tense yet quiet tranquility is now routed by the sounds of machine guns and artillery fire. Scottish and English cannons attempt to hit the other side. Uh, with thousands of guns covering the ground, mowing down anyone who dares to cross the lines or poke his head up. In an instant, the peace of British countryside has turned into Verdun. Well, let's hope not. How was this, was this avoidable? Could this have been prevented with some sensible decisions? Likely, but with common sense not having yet prevailed, and now the Isles have been abroad in the end of the bloody war, we only pray that we have emerged victorious. Well, I mean, I don't really care. They're going to learn their lesson one way or another. Social change, what is it? It's, uh... Uh, we could hold a rally, but we're not going to waste the choir like that. Give you guys a little bit of time to get more reorganized. And then we shall launch an offensive. The English military and the Welsh military. The English and Welsh militaries. Military. Knows what they're doing. It's England and Scotland war. The Scottish could not see reason. Of course they couldn't. Why would they? Serbia sides with Germany. That is not good. Three. Two. One. A full frontal assault under Bernard Montgomery. Good. Still can't do anything else, and that is fine. Shaking hands and promising action. Margaret Thatcher understands the art of the deal. Oh, money's the key to success, and men will rarely part with it without due cause. To keep our rich and influential donors loyal, and to entice them into donating more for the party, we must secure some more deals and alliances with them. The Scottish are breaking as soon as we began the assault. Hmm. Good, good, good. Uh, let's see, base. Oh, the base loyalty is currently 100%. Nice. Uh, let's see, efficiency. We could increase that, but let's save it for more. Oh, that's good stuff. And Industrial Giants, thank you. 99% influence. That's good enough for me. <clears throat> Ur visit Urban Centers, yes. 100% Elite Sport. Great. You could hold a rally, but now. Nah. Popular Support increased by... Uh, we could do that right now, even though it's going up, so it doesn't really matter. Losses so far. But less than a thousand versus... Look at all the dead Scots. I mean, come on. You should have listened. You should have listened. Hmm, GDP stuff. Yeah, we're not going to lower that yet. Uh, deficit's not looking bad. Wow, 83 billion. It was a 70-some earlier. Oh, this is so nice. This is so nice. Oh, what is this? Unread... Oh! We sunk 10 enemy Scottish destroyers. Oh, they're, of course, early ships, but that's okay. Oh, we're finally fighting a naval battle. Oh, boy. Let's get some of this, too. Come on, sink their ships. Sink them, sink them, sink them. <clears throat> Teach Scotland a lesson. Uh, I don't think either of you guys have upgrades. Ah, uh, maybe James does. Uh, not really. Probing attack, that's okay. I think we're doing pretty well regardless. He's level 6, that's pretty good. Air XP is slowly going up, barely. Naval XP is going up slowly. Promising action, punch the traitors. While well, we celebrate our... Actually, let's not do that one, because we get more influence. Thank our voters. We shall publicly display our gratitude to the, to the loyal royal party voters throughout the country and stress our dedication to their needs as citizens and constituents. Public letters and speeches should be enough to satisfy the masses. Very good. Alright, Scotland is falling. We've lost about 1,000. Versus 34,000. Was, was that worth it, Scotland? Was that really, really worth it? And look at... At that flag. The loud, a loud refusal. Oh, look. Nice. Tons of manpower. Glorious, my friends. England defeats Scotland, a change in the air. Rule Britannia, Britannia rules the waves. Britons never, never, never shall be slaves. 
Things are becoming slowly better in Scotland. Uh, the air is less foggy. If you want to read this, go right ahead. The anger towards English in Scotland has gotten better. Well, there may still be peace in the north. But that's where we're going to end today's episode. We've done very well. We have reunited the Isles under one banner, the UK. Now, hopefully there's something we can do about Ireland, because that'd be a lot of fun. But regardless, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you all tomorrow as we shall continue to expand our economy, our influence, and our land. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.